Series 3. What are the major improvements over Series 2? In terms of listening, yeah. they have a... YG speakers have always been incredibly accurate. Right. Um, the challenge sometimes in the past mm -hmm. is that they're, they've been slightly aggressively accurate. Uh -huh. And it can, especially with difficult recordings, yeah. it can be a little bit fatiguing. Uh, with the, depending on system choice, yeah. it can, it, it's something that sounds amazing, mm -hmm. but maybe an hour later, two hours later, you're starting mm -hmm. to feel tired. Mm -hmm. The new speakers are, um, carry even more detail, mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. more micro detail. Uh -huh. um, but they're, they're a lot more relaxed. Uh -huh. The presentation is, for me, yeah. I, I like to... How did you I like to that? listen. Yeah. Oh, it's it, so many things. Uh -huh. it's, it, again, comes back to these measurements and understanding. <laughs> Extending the new lattice tweeter that we yeah. have hugely reduces the distortion uh -huh. out past 40 kilohertz. Uh -huh. So we have this very benign distortion characteristic. Yeah. Um, it, the phase coherence uh -huh. is the phase slope yeah. is much, much more flat. Yeah. It's as so many little things, the impulse response, mm -hmm. the, um, because the, the, the shape of the new yeah. lattice, which is right. behind the tweeter, right. uh, is stable to a much, much higher frequency. Mm -hmm. It means that you, you end up with any sort of impulse, the yeah. sudden click impulse mm -hmm. is carried far more clearly. And that's something which is, um, something the human ear is very sensitive to. Right. The even the starburst surround. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know whether you've noticed the, the surround around the tweeter yeah. has these tiny ridges. That was a funny thing. The simulation suggested we do that. Really. And I was sitting there and thinking, no, this isn't going to make any difference. How does simulation suggest that? What the simulation was showing us yeah. was that the there's a coherent first reflection from okay. the, the waveguide, yeah. which is something which, according to the simulation, yeah. was going to be acoustically negative. Uh -huh. And it was suggesting, it was saying, well, this first reflection is something that you want to try to break up. Yeah. So we were looking at it and think, well, if we put some ridges in there, uh -huh. that should break it up. Uh -huh. So we put some tiny ridges, ridges and then we allowed the simulation to optimize yeah. where the ridges were and how deep they were. Yeah. And it turns out it, it's one of these crazy things. I didn't believe it. Yeah. And then we built one with these <laughs> tiny ridges. It's incredible. Uh -huh. And its biggest impact is exactly that. It's uh -huh. that sense of relaxed. Uh -huh. The spatial information uh -huh. is all there, yeah. but it's, it's just so much more. <sighs> I'm always trying to relate the very scientific yeah. and the measurements yeah. to things which I'm feeling here. Exactly. So cool. uh, the mid range is also a yeah. lot more open. Uh -huh. um, it's, for me, with so many types of music, yeah. that very immediate, that engaging mid-range uh -huh. yeah. um, is very important. And that's an area where if you listen to it, uh -huh. almost all the listeners who compare reference two to reference three. Is it because of the crossover uh, of frequency changes? No, it's not actually yeah. changing the crossover frequency. Uh -huh. It's to do with the phase alignment. Uh -huh. If you're perfectly phase aligned between yeah. drivers across yeah. uh, a wide frequency range, yeah then you don't have any crossover distortion. Okay. You end up, if you look at the reference three yeah. uh, speakers, yeah. their distortion measurements, even if you play, music, play tones exactly at the crossover point, mm -hmm. the distortion measurements, when both drivers are moving exactly together, yeah. are more, they're like minus 80 dB. Wow. They're distortion measurements which you normally associate with electronics right. rather than loudspeakers yeah. and what's more is not just at exactly the crossover frequency it's at any frequency uh -huh. because across the whole range right. the two drivers are moving exactly together right. if you don't get that right if you build a speaker where the drive units are only phase aligned at the crossover point uh -huh. then each side the two start to be out of phase exactly. and you end up with this it's a very nasty type of distortion that uh -huh. human ears yeah. struggle with. Uh -huh. So it's principally that phase alignment mm -hmm. that leads to the relaxed mid-range. So there's a lot of math going into that, <laughs> yeah. right? It's maths driving the design. Yeah. The other thing is, for example, this, yeah. the lattice that I talked about, right. we machine in-house. Uh -huh. 
we use the very latest generation CNC machines wow. to be able to cut these, these. It's a very special alloy we use. Yeah. It's milled to an accuracy of a thousandth of a millimeter. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's these two working hand in hand. We wow. have the maths and the simulation. Right. None of it would be worth anything if, if, we didn't, if we didn't have this incredible. If you have a chance to visit our Denver facility, I, I haven't seen another manufacturing facility yeah. in audio sector, yeah. which is anywhere near that level of capability mm -hmm. and accuracy. Mm -hmm. So we have this ability to push these designs through into reality. Yeah. The same with the Starburst. Yeah. Surround to the tweeter. Right. It requires cutting to an accuracy of two thousandths of a millimeter uh -huh. for it to do what it does. Oh, yeah. um, that's that's such a challenging thing to be able to do. Yeah. Um, so. It's, it's kind of hand in hand. Yeah. The waveguide has changed for a Twitter. So when you upgrade from series two, you can only upgrade the units, right? No, yeah. we offer moving. YG has long had a tradition yeah. of letting people upgrade. Right. If you have one of our um, old reference products, mm -hmm. there's three types of upgrade that you mm -hmm. can have. One is just to change the tweeter. Yeah. We've designed the new tweeter so oh. that the frequency response and the sensitivity are very similar to the old tweeter. Right. So you can just swap the tweeter uh -huh. and you get a lot of the benefits yeah. of reference three. Or you can swap the tweeter and the crossover. Yeah. That's probably 90% of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Or there's a full upgrade where we replace the faceplate as well. Wow. That's great. The downside is you have to send the speaker back to the factory. Okay, that's going to the, cost a lot. <laughs> exactly. In Asia Pacific as well, yeah, I yeah. feel I, I always feel sorry for the customers who want to do that here yeah. because we can now, now that YG is both based in Cambridge, UK yeah. and Denver, yeah. we now have two service centers. Oh, so at least for you... Cambridge also does, huh? Yes. So yeah. at least for European customers, yeah. we can deal with it in Cambridge. Okay. Uh, we, we need to work on having YG in Asia, in, yeah. in Asia yeah. and then being able to do it here. Yeah. Do YG speakers have a burning time? They do. Uh -huh. uh, it depends on the, the burning time. The crossovers yeah. have, very, have a tiny impact of burn-in. Uh -huh. um, so there is a tiny improvement uh -huh. over a period of time of playing them, yeah. but it's tiny. You, um, the drive units, yeah. like all dynamic drive units, yeah. there is a sense of loosening right. over time. Right. You'll particularly find the bass uh -huh. um, becomes a little bit more full and a little bit more relaxed uh -huh. over time. Yeah. The mid-range drivers, the 15 centimeter drivers that we use in the Sonyas, we also use in the Cairn, yeah. need almost no burn-in. Okay. Pretty much from the beginning, uh -huh. they're, they're really good. Uh -huh. Um, and then as you get larger from there, the 18s need yeah. a little bit more burn-in, the 22s, 26s, a uh -huh. little bit more than yeah. that, the yeah. 28s and 32s, yeah. even a little bit more than that. Yeah. How long of burning time do you need in average? When we're preparing for a show yeah. with new loudspeakers, mm -hmm. the minimum that we'll do on a big pair of loudspeakers is one week. Oh, okay. So typically what we do is we put the speakers facing each other yeah. and we play them out of phase. Oh, Okay. So you end up with much less sound in the environment, uh -huh. and we'll leave them playing with a brown noise uh -huh. or interspersed with some transients, uh -huh. and it does a great job. About a, about a week, you get 90% of the benefit. Okay. You can carry on forever, but you know, it's a... <laughs> right. <laughs> in the end, you want to listen to the speakers. Exactly. So.